love it. The calls. You'll eventually get the 20% back. That Silver Connect card is going to pay her co-payments. Remicade, I believe, is an injectable. And her hospitalization co-payments. And tell them to turn his Part B on. I speak enough, I don't need to kill you guys, my listeners. It is the 28th of August. Don't forget, we must ring the bells at 3 o'clock for Dr. Martin Luther King. Today, the I Have a Dream speech was 50 years to the day. Today, we have the Mattituck Minute at the top of the hour. Of course, you know the show is called Medicare and You. Please, today, there is no guest in the studio, so I know a lot of people have questions in regards to maybe health care reform or what's happening with Medicare. Call in 757-1320. The phone lines will be open the whole show. I have an agenda. If you don't call in, I will keep talking, but no in-studio guests um, this time. We're going to have a typical Mattituck Minute, and I hope my friend Stephanie Harris is on the line. How are you? Good. Well done, Producer Tom. Nicely done there, queuing it in. All right, so. Our development director, Jessica Musick, with us today. Yes, Hello. that was a request. Jess, nice to hear your voice. That was a request of um, Stephanie and I, because we have an agenda for today, but then we also have a big event we want to make sure we get out on the airwaves happening on September 20th. So, Stephanie, you and I will have our typical minute, and then Jessica will um, take over with her development strategies. Sounds great. Okay. So um, in rehearsal, you told me today you have uh, something happening today. T do the whole typical Mattituck Minute. Sure. So tonight um, at 530 here at the museum, we've got artist Carolyn Marks Blackwood um, downstairs in the Contemporary Gallery doing a tour of her current exhibition, Strange Beauty, the photography of Carolyn Marks Blackwood. She's going to be taking us through uh, the exhibition, talking about individual pieces as well as her process. Okay. And uh, I think it'll be—I think it'll be a really intimate, uh, nice event. Woman's name is Carolyn Marks. Marks Blackwood. Okay, I got that. What's um? What else is happening? Well, uh, actually, before I move on, I just want to mention that those exhibitions are closing on September 8th as well. So um, we have the, the two exhibitions on the first floor and the preppy exhibition on the second floor are all closing um, not this Sunday but the following Sunday. So if you haven't had a chance to make it down for those, um, it's your last opportunity to see those great exhibitions. And is somebody of some high authority in our state here to see the preppy exhibit today? I don't know, Mike. I don't know either. Okay. I don't know if we're allowed to say that, huh? Nope. Okay. Um, most importantly, the preppy exhibit was fantastic. I went to the opening, and I have seen it a few times. If you haven't seen it, get down to the museum. We have the rowers with the ripped physiques on the first floor. I think the um, Munger room, that is. That's correct. And then um, visit the store, you know. Do a little charity. If you do something, we appreciate that already. But as far as the charity is concerned, we have a fantastic event coming up on September 20th. Let's hear about that. On September 20th at 6 p.m., we're going to be honoring Kathy and Jim Smith for their work in the community. Kathy was on the board here at the museum for 12 years. Tireless, tire never late for a meeting, always on time, was on the executive committee, the board of directors, just always ran a phenomenally organized, to the minute even. She'd be like, okay, calling the meeting to the uh, start, adjourning the meeting, can I get a motion? I mean, she is a great lady. And one of the things I like about the Smith family is they don't necessarily have to do it. They love Waterbury. They want to do it. Very, very true. They've done a lot for the community, yeah. both through Webster Bank and on an individual level, and the museum is very excited to be honoring them on September 20th. And this is the Brass Button Award. That is right. Do we have any background? What uh, Our famous Tom Shute here at WATR is a past recipient. Do we have any background on the Brass Button and what it represents? Sure. So, so we started the Brass Button a few years ago. This is actually our fifth annual 
uh, Brass Button Award. And basically, it's, um, it's an award that we give to members of the community who we feel are um, exemplary uh, philanthropists, basically. Right. People who not only give um, donations and their money, but also, more importantly, their time. They're right. people who we feel, or who the community feels, are um, you know, keyed in to what Waterbury and the surrounding area need and, and what's really in, in the area's best interest in terms of social and cultural enrichment. And, and they're really working and striving to, to make um, the community a better place through, through their efforts. Are we still with you, Mike? Sorry. Are you with me? Yeah, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, Producer Tom, the, the uh, phones are ringing off the hook in here. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, all right, so most importantly, is they actually do give back to the community. That That's the reason for the award. Obviously, the button after the button factory, which is um, something that Waterbury is known for, um, the Brass City being brass, and it couldn't go to a nicer couple. Jess, are we allowed to talk over the airwaves what kind of numbers, what kind of um, guests? We'd like the place to be packed. And in Nancy Becker's words, I hope it's at the Mattituck Museum. I, I remember those echoed so beautifully. It's at the museum, correct? It is at the museum, Mike, and we are very fortunate that a lot of people have been calling up and very interested in the event. We've had quite a few sponsorships this year for the event, which you can see all the information on our website at mattituckmuseum.org. Beautiful. Brass button. And uh, we hope some people listening today will go on and maybe buy some tickets or make a donation in honor of Kathy and Jim. Um, many ways to support the event. They've touched so many people with their philanthropic efforts. I mean, this is definitely something we all are hoping is going to be packed. And um, I myself am going to either get a table or pay for half a table. I just talked to my buddy Jim, and he's already sitting at the American Savings Bank table, so I lost a, a guest, I mean, a, a friend and a, and a patron of my table, but I'm going to take a, a full page ad out and I'm going to do everything I can to get the table just because I feel that they have done so much. They've been a great influence on me in my life. My mom, Jerry, I remember seeing Jim Smith himself standing in line at my mom's funeral and you don't forget those things. So um, get out there, support the Brass Button Award. It's September 20th at 6 p.m., correct? Correct. Yeah. That is correct, Mike. All right, be beautifully done, ladies. And I'm sorry for any of the uh, technical difficulties we have there. We're all we're only human. That's right. No, no problem. All right. We'll all right. talk to you next time. Have a great day. Keep up the good work. You too. Thanks. Okay. Bye -bye. So, um, the Mattituck Minute. So, I, what I'm actually doing right now is I'm being inundated with too many technologies. So I'm going to shut the phone off. If we don't get them, we don't get the guests. It's hard when you're coordinating a show. Everyone these days has a cell phone, and they don't necessarily know I'm doing the show live on the air, so I'll have to address that during a commercial break. Um, I don't. Daryl Willenbrock, my friend and colleague, is going to be coming, uh, calling in today. We're going to discuss the exchange with that. Let me say one thing. Did everyone see the Republican American on Sunday? This is a Medicare and you. Call in with any questions you have. I actually have to let you know something really mean happened. Um, Waterbury Hospital, there's people in Waterbury Hospital that listen to the show, and they called the agency, and the woman is in billing. No names for HIPAA reasons, you know me, but they asked a question. This male or female, can't even tell you who it is, but I got to protect their identity, was told misinformation. They were working full-time at an organization, said company ABC, and they were told misinformation. And they said, oh, no problem. You don't need to go get Part B. Don't trust anybody. Uh, you out there, you got to look out for yourself. You can't just say, huh, I guess that person's right. Even myself, I'm not right all the time. I study as hard as I can. Um, I do take an annual exam called the AHIP once a year. My colleague Gene and I took it this week. You know, we study really hard. Kristen, again, thanks for all your help. 
we study hard to be right, but I myself am not even 100% right all the time. Double check. This gentleman is now, or woman is now, on the hook for over $15,000 worth of bills. That's really bad karma, really bad. Unfortunately, it's it's job security for attorneys because I feel this person, she or he, was wronged. And... Um, we, we at the office couldn't help that individual. So when someone says, I'm turning 65, do you d- your due diligence. Like my buddy, Richard, um, he is a friend of mine. He and I personally went down to the Social Security Department to make sure it was done compliant. Care about yourselves. Care about your neighbor. Care about your spouse. Care about your best friend. This is something important. Medicare is not a joke. The poor person is now going to be penalized on their Part B premium. They have to get it during annual election period, and then it's still too late. So he's got to turn on the Part B probably if he doesn't have an SEP, which is a special enrollment period. He's got to turn on the Part B now January through March 31st, and the coverage for Part B won't even kick in till July 1st, all because... Somebody in HR or somebody said the wrong answer. So please out there, if you're listening to the show, um, Joanne, I researched it for a friend of mine. I didn't even know the answer, and I was so excited I double-backed. I found out a, a certain particular skilled nursing facility. Well, by the time I had secured it in writing from my people, she had also double-backed. Very thorough. That's what I want to hear when I call up. And I wanted to be, of course, the first one right with the right answer, but she was happy that I followed it up. Get it maybe once. Get it in writing. You can always call the local Social Security Department. Their local phone number is one 877 405 Four eight seven four. You get three months before the month of and three months after to sign up for Part B. If you're over 65 and your firm is under 20 full and part-time employees, credible coverage is great, but make sure that you don't need to turn the Part B on. This has happened more than at least three times this year, maybe 10 times in my career. And this is a doozy. I heard a, a whopper of a bill. You know, if it was 1200 bucks or something like that, that's doable. 15000 is a financial crush to a senior living on a fixed income, regardless of how well they did in life. And I don't bash people for making money. I'm trying to make money. I give back to the community. I would like my beautiful wife and twins to have a good life and good education. There's nothing wrong with people making money, but it's foolish to squander it if you just could have maybe gotten a second opinion. All right, enough with my soapbox. Um, Lines are not lit up. I want to see some action on this board, please. I know you've got questions out there. Terry Longo, thanks so much for the plug on Tom Shute's show this morning. That was really nice of you to um, say that I was an honest and ethical person. I won't forget that. My hero, same last name as my family. And it's on the newspaper on Sunday's Republican American. Um, So I'm going to just talk about him briefly. What a great senior. 82-year-old stud, Harold Sullivan. Did you see the front cover of the August 25th, 2013 paper? Just great coverage for you, Mr. Sullivan. You and your family are great people. Your wife, Arlene, is a beautiful woman. Your kids are personal friends of mine. And it couldn't uh, couldn't have happened to a better person. So really nice coverage for you and your family. Keith. Just the fact that you did gain some valuable memories, that's irreplaceable. It just is. So um, good for you, the Sullivan family. They're good seniors. All right. Now let me just do my job because we've been muddying up the waters all summer long with guests and college people. One of my ideas was to try to invent an introductory CNA, like a certified nurse's assistant, some kind of program for my seniors to learn basics of care. Um, just basic, you know, how to check the blood pressure, how to check a fever, um, not do blood work, obviously, but just some simple stuff. I am working on that. I still haven't lost the idea of the senior prom. I'm just having some major stumbling blocks with the, the bus coordinating with the senior centers all agreeing. So I'm definitely working still on my idea last year on the senior prom. I've got some callers calling in. Way to be smart. You got Michael Regan with Medicare and you. How can I help you? Hello. Michael Regan, how can I help you? 
Yeah, hi. I have a question on the Part B insurance. Part B is doctor mm-hmm. visits. Part A is hospital. How can I help you? Correct. I'm currently working, okay, oh, and I have insurance through my company. Okay. My company has 20 or more employees. And I also have Part B insurance. Okay, okay slow down. You're going so fast. My, my, i got to make sorry, sure I'm right because it's a live show. Okay, so you're a gentleman. You're how young? I'm um, 65. 65 now. What was your, no names for HIPAA reasons, what's your date of birth? 8148. 8148. Okay, so you elected to take Part B just because you wanted to be proactive and get it, correct? Correct. Well, this is my question, Okay. I'm currently working, and I have insurance through my company. Employer. Correct. Okay. And it's more than 20 20 full and part-time employees. Correct. Okay. I got this all day. They they are my primary. Carrier is primary. Your carrier, your insurance carrier, whoever your insurance card and your work. My insurance carrier, yes, yes. yes. I have Oxford. They're primary. Correct. My question is this. I have a $5,700 deductible through my Oxford Health Plan. Okay. So I elected to take Part B. Now, hopefully I'm right on this because Medicare really can't answer this. It all depends on who I talk to. I get a couple of different answers. Do I have to meet the whole $5,700 deductible before Part B kicks in? Are you going to the doctor or are you going to the hospital? This is for doctor. The coordination of coverage is that Oxford is primary, and then because it's over 20, Medicare is secondary. If you Correct. show your Medicare card, there is a chance that 80% of the bill will be picked up by Medicare. But I always am honest. I don't have the answer on a live radio show right now. Is there a chance I could at least research this for a couple hours? I know the answer, and I hate to say it, you owe the $5,700 first, but I think under coordination of care, Medicare is going to pick up some of the stuff um, because you have such a high deductible. Is there a reason, sir, that you just don't go on Medicare right now? Well, the reason I can't go on Medicare is because, from what I understand, I'm still working. You're actively at work full time. Yes. And you have no 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 sign of retiring anytime soon. Well, hopefully at 66. Yes. That's smart. You know that. Don't collect Social Security then until you're 66. Your check will be bigger. Right. All right. Um, I got a punt on this one. I got to pull a punt. I don't know the hundred percent answer. I have to call. Did you call Medicare? I did. I did, you know, Mike, I, I called the, it's the IEQ, the initial enrollment questionnaire yeah. people. No, they it's said, oh, I IEP, have to meet the whole IEP, initial election period. He almost had it, IEP. All right. All right. They so, said, oh, you have to meet the whole $5,700 right. deductible. That, that's, and then, then I called Medicare themselves, uh, not the IEP, and they said, oh, no. We will pay what they – so I'm getting a mixed bag of Don't worry. Here. That's that's why I just passed my test with a good grade. You're gonna, I'm going right. to give you I mean, my I'm regular – I'm really doing my due diligence here. I'm really trying to research this, but I, I just keep coming up with a, a, a dead end. You and I are going to do a conference call. Um, I'm not your agent. I don't want to be your agent until I earn your well, trust. You, you will be my agent. Well, let me, I let just me, don't know if I should see you now or later. No, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna do a conference call. Let me give you my regular phone number for the office. Are you in the greater Waterbury area? Yes, I am. Okay, so you can call the local number. It's 203-757-6099. And you and I are going to call 1-800-633-4227, which is 1-800-MEDICARE. We're going to call it together. I'm going to document the phone call, and then I'm going to get it to my local gurus at CMS and at the Agency on Aging. And before... Your three-month window runs out. You got plenty of time. You got Part B. You're compliant. The only thing you're spending is $104.90, but it sounds like that's not going to be a deal killer for you. Right. All right. Call well, me the, off the, the air. Too, I don't. I don't want to have to spend that if it's if I have to meet my whole $5,700. Right. That, but, but, but CMS only gives you one time to turn it off, and I'll tell you that off air as well. Call my mm-hmm. my people at my office. Leave them your name. I will call you on my own, and we'll do a conference call. No fee involved, no nothing, just because it's good karma. It's the right thing to do.
Great. I, appreciate I hate to say that. it, but there is a chance you're going to owe the fifty seven hundred dollars. I just don't. I don't know if we can coordinate the care, having them be secondary, with such a high deductible. I don't think it's fair that that you should have to exhaust that. No copay, no nothing. It's just a straight HSA with a fifty seven hundred dollar deductible. Correct. Yeah, that's Direct 13, the Oxford plan. I know it by heart. It's a poo-poo plan. Right. I mean, after the 57. I love United better. Healthcare. Don't let me bash United Healthcare ever. But the plan your employer chose is it's tough. It's just because the premiums are so high. All right. right. I'm going to take the caller on line two. I'll talk to you in a couple hours. Michael Regan, that was a tough one, huh? Hello. Oof. This is my friend Daryl. Yes, it is. How agency are you? on Aging, the Daryl Agency on Aging guru. Um, Daryl, my producers are saying we have to take a commercial break. Can you hold 30 seconds? We'll be right with you, and you've got 15 minutes of air time. Absolutely. God bless you. Talk to right in, right in one minute. We'll be right back, Medicare and you.